Wook Pugless Night by Mark Anti Range, inspired by Bram Stoker. It was an unusually sunny day in Munich, Germany. The air seemed to be full of joyousness before my journey. I met her Deborick, the maitre of Quote St. Anne's. When I went, I am staying. He came on duty to say to me, my fellow travellers, to have a good journey, as form of good luck, as it was custom to do so. When we started our drive, the sun was shining. Just as we were to depart, I overheard Hope Derek telling the coach driver to be back by nightfall, to which the driver replied, he knew that night was night it was, and had every intention of being back by nightfall. After we were away from town, I asked my fellow travellers, what was the special about tonight? One replied, it was Whiskrip, where Pugliast night. The driver took out his silver pocket watch to check the time and proceeded to the carriage for the horses to pick up speed as we were on our journey. All I could see was a bleak road until I saw a long but unused road which seemed to call out to me. So I banged on the carriage roof to signal the driver to stop the coach. The coach driver was bewildered. Why I wished to take the road, coach on a new route, despite my generous offer of payment, which he would profit, he made all sorts of excuses. Why well, this is a bad idea. He then murmured, "It was Wuss Well, Wuss night, and mixture of German, a bad English, and Welsh. Doing so made the sign across of himself several times. The horses sniffed the air, beginning re- becoming restless. I heard a driver while I was pointing." And turning the carriage back towards its previous direction, people buried their, them, that killed it themselves. He was talking as they, as he was talking, a sudden howling of dogs was heard. As this, the horses came so restless at the point of bolting. The driver said, "Their howling sounds like the wolves. There are no wolves here, but now, being in these woods, for, been in these woods for decades, I did." Find this a bit odd. The wind became cold. I noticed the driver's hands holding reins a death like grip. I asked him, Tell me, where does this road lead? He said, It was unholy in a nearby village. It led, it led to a legend that was hundreds of years ago. Men and women were buried in the graves in which they heard the sounds holding moans. When the graves were opened, inside of being pale or ashen, a rosy of life and blood on her lips. Coach driver, during this narration, was showing me a practice of a fear. He was white-faced, trembling and perspiring. Yet again, he said, What's well, progress, night? At this point, I decided to make my own way down the road. I was calling me. I took out my possessions and informed the coach driver, I'm not afraid of this night. I stood to one side. The coach driver whipped the horses into frenzy. A carriage off at speed leading me to carry out down the road. I walked for hours until I came to the fringe of a wood. I decided to sit down and rest my weary legs. I noticed the temperature grew, got colder. I thought I could hear a strange sighting, sighing noise. The atmosphere, as I looked up, the sky, great thick clouds were forming, a sign of that coming tempest. I carried on my walk in the brightness of day, slowly emerged in plutonium darkness of night. Yet again the howling of wolf was heard at intervals. In the distance I saw a deserted village. I followed my unseen path as I needed to seek shelter of the heavens, be torn by vivid lightning and driving heavy rain. I went yet another nearby bits of woods and stood amongst the trees of shelter. Soon the most of the storm it passed it. Worse the storm passed it. I went on its way to further fields. As I walked away again, on my path, the moon appeared in its full glory, giving me a silvery light to aid my walking. I came upon old foundations, which the edge of the corpse was a too low to wall with circling it. I carried on walking to enter the graveyard. Before my eyes was a massive tomb of marble, and yet again heard long haunting howls of wolves. They walked on until I came upon a stupor, which my curious nature, I walked closer to the Doric door, 
and over which was written in German was Cantus de Lunenkin, a grout in Syria, brought and found death in 1801. I looked above his tomb, a great iron spoke embedded in blocks of wood. Above that, in Russian, was a dead travel fast. Then it sensibly made me feel weird and faint. I heard my subconscious mind, the warnings, the coach driver, then it struck me, as if it struck by lightning. This was worst progress night. The night the devil was awake, and graves were open, dead awoke and walked to the earth, reveal with the e- other evil things in the myth, the coach driver had told me to shun. This was the site of the populated village that made a, a, a many centuries ago. This made my light flight response kick in and, pa- and panicked by overwhelming fear. I started to run with all my might until I seeked shelter, crouching against the bronze door of the tomb. I ran in endless circle, and an unknown force kept drawing me back to the formal tomb of the Pre- Countess. I lay there between fear and sensibility. I saw before me the hazy light of the moon, a woman of stunning beauty, who was, as she got a bit closer, I, I saw branded cheeks, red lips, seeming sleeping on bare. It shot me to an all-like state. I had a feeling I was no longer alone. Suddenly, a storm gave me the force again. The skies and clouds became very dark. I heard a rumble of thunder and a fork of lightning struck my own pipe. Spike, surrounded, mounted on the tomb, causing crumbling in the marble. This point, the woman of prayer rose from the slumber of the dead. Let she she let out a bitter scream, of pain. But I seized and dragged away in the background was an abundant howling of wolves. Again, to pass out, I sensed my dreamlike state as the surrounding graves around the tomb of Countess I sent out phantoms of the dead. They were closing in on me. After a while, I came back to weary, vague beginning of consciousness, a sense of weariness. My feet were racked with pain, but not so, but as much as I tried, I could not move them, as they were numb. I had an icy feeling down my back of my spine and neck, yet in the torment of my breast was a sense of warmth, which, which felt delirious. I realised I have having a physical nightmare, and my chest was finding it difficult to breathe, as I might have some sort of heavy weight on my chest. I might have gone back into a swoon as I woke. It felt like being seasick and sort of loathing, then an overwhelming desire to be free of what I did not know, as if I were between the world of sleep or dead. It's broken my sound, or some animal came close to me panting. There was warm rasping on my throat. It chilled me to my heart. I sensed blood surging through my brain. Yes, there was some animal lying on me, licking at my throat. I feared to stir, and somehow the animal told me sensed a change in me. My vision came back in focus. There it was in my eyes to clearly see two flaming eyes, gigantic wolf with its sharp teeth, gleaming its red mouth gaping. I could feel its hot breath and acid upon me. I went back to state of unconscious. I regained my consciousness. I heard a low growl followed by a yelp. Then I heard voices call out, Holia, Holia, cautiously managed to raise my head. I looked back in the direction the sound was coming from, but my view was blocked. I woke again, sleep, half asleep, as if I was near death. Then for no reason the wolf let out a mighty yelp. I thought I saw a human hand grab it by the throat. But I tossed it away like it was as if it was rag, ragdoll, but I fell back into stupor. Later I was woken by the sound of dinner gong. As I became more aware of my surroundings, I got almost dizzy at first, and my legs found their bearings. I walked towards the ringing sound of the gong, dinner gong. I walked down the creaking stairs and pursued, perused my surroundings a bit better. It was a castle, I guess built in the 15th century, Turkish design, which most of a student of history in Turkish near, never came near this far north into German borders. I was truly amazed to see the front of my table loaded loaded with food and drink. And at the head of the long table sat a man, tiny in red, jet black, only a bit of red in his collar, shirt collar, his ashen face of ruby red, 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 red lips. His eyes gazed at me, hypnotic quality. I sat down at the table, had to admit my gentleman, like behaviour left me, as a ravenous and a man at the end of the table just sat and observed me. He spoke with a gravel voice. 
It's good to have company once again. I hope the food is to your taste. Yes, but you seem to not to be hungry yourself. No, I ate earlier, and uh, it filled me up. Pardon my ignorance, sir, but thank you for your rescue. How may I address you? My name is Count Dracula. You are found in my late wife's tomb. You mean the Countess Tadronin? But how come her last name is different from yours? If you don't mind me asking. No, I don't mind you asking, Mark, as I am an open book. It was to hide the fact she was my bride. She was the one who made me change my ways, longer the feed of humans for life essence. They said I made a deal with the German government to rid them of any of their enemies and make them one of my undead. And not to make them one of my dead. But like all tales, it went wrong. My worth turned to a beast of a wolf whose hunger was at no bounds. The unknown to me, as I slept by day, my coffin began a killing me, a village where we had to move deeper into the outskirts of town to hide. My wife could not understand why, and finally, she trapped and being killed and placed in a tomb, in which she was placed an iron spike to keep imprisoned. So I could visit her, but she could do no more harm. But tonight the curse of Edgar's night struck again, releasing her. I came just in time to stop her drinking all your blood and making a creature in the night. I choked on my food, my knife and fork chained to the floor upon the floor, about to get up. Then, but I looked into the Countess's eyes, I glued my chair, chair, able to escape. I realised my time was near the end. As like all books I read, a villain reveals a plot. A person, being told, ends up dead. No, Mark, I can read your mind. I don't know what's to kill you off. For you will write about this event down to a call in history. This I, Count Dracula, saved your life, but no one will believe it. There, my friend, you are wrong, for I give you this letter. I looked upon the letter it was written. I, Count Dracula, saved the life of Mark Wright, a long the villain, written about by the Irish man Bram Stoker. Signed, Count Dracula, the world in red mist, I back in the carriage my fellow travellers, the coach driver, Ready to leave the Quantra Stanons. Nothing had happened. But just my vivid imagination. I checked my coat pocket inside, which had said a letter, signed. I revealed it. And I went on this time to my original destination, back to England, was inspired to write this event as it happened.